another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes. His name is Bricky. You know why you're here, you think. But if you enjoy today's episode and you want to support the podcast, head over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous where you can get access to the Discord, bloopers if they happen, $15 tier gets you access to all of our posters in crispy digital HD format. You can also follow the Patreon on like Facebook, Google, whatever platform. Actually, there's very specific platforms. Check the description. And uh, you can do a free trial of our Patreon, but it will require a credit card. Patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. How is it, Bricky? Yo, it good. A good man. Dab me up. Oh, or is it, yeah. Or is it dap? dap? Is it dap, dap or dap? dap? It's dap me up, baby. Dap okay. me up. Yeah. All right. I, I thought it was dab I, me up. I, I don't know how you. I don't know how you do it over like microphone. How you do like a dap sound? I, th- I think. Like I a, think. Let me see. If I, let me see how good of like a like a grab I can do. Let's see the sound effect. Yeah, that's a good yeah, dab, baby. Let's go. That's a good dab, baby. Yeah, all right. So, <laughs> that's uh, a marksman dab. Let's go. All right. So so call, call my ass a Pathfinder team. <laughs> the way I, I, I screw this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice yeah. Try, dude. So we're gonna have a ton of new merch next week. I promise. This time, uh, it's actually going to be uh, real. There's gonna be like a whole lot of new stuff. Uh, right in like right on the thirtieth. So get ready. Uh, it's gonna be a lot. So we'll check that out very soon. I'm excited. Um, yeah. Uh. So today's episode. Yeah. Today's episode. Eh. It's uh, this is gonna be a spicy one, huh? You know, yeah, you know, uh, you know, our our last uh, group game review did fantastic. You know, we we were we were sung praises <laughs> of down the street, flowers thrown. Uh, oh yes, so, they still sing our praises about that to this day. And so, why not do it again? You know. <laughs> It was Except even this funnier time. the second yeah. time. But hey, at least this time it is probably not as beloved a game. So if we happen to be mm, a little critical of it, I don't think it'll be the craziest thing in the world. Or if we happen to be total contrarians and say it's not that bad, uh, that'll make us seem even worse. Mm, yeah, we'll get the, oh the contrarian critique. Yeah, Ooh, yep, yes, yep. yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, okay. um, so today we are talking about a much older 40k game. Yeah, uh, from 2003, the original Warhammer 40k Fire Warrior that came out on the PlayStation 2 way back <laughs> when. Um, it is. It is known in a lot of okay. It's like the only time Tau have ever had a game. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've had the occasional like faction to play as in Dawn of War, mm-hmm. and of course, there's like a couple other things. But for the most part, it's the first like Warhammer Tau centric game, yeah, ever. Uh, and-, and it came out in in a very different time. So- <laughs> yeah. The lore was different. The the things were different. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think the F- Gaunt's Ghost first and only book came out in. Oh my god, it came out in 1999. Um, holy. Okay, my so bones. <laughs> my bones they ache. They creak. So, so uh, 1999 is when Gaunt's Ghost first book came out, which means that we're in a different world of like power creep. Oh and, yeah, and levels and stuff. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say you 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 play uh, Fire Warrior for you know two three hours and it's like oh we're in this era of power scaling, got it? Where space marines aren't the immortal unstoppable behemoths; they're just really good soldiers. You know they're good, but they're not invincible. Ceramite armor does not protect you against everything. You are you know mortal and uh and also going through with all of this uh we got fire warrior on gog gog uh which is a uh, let's just say what they're selling is not the greatest of stuff uh a, a big shout out to mandalore gaming uh other youtuber who did a video on fire warrior and also put an oh. unofficial patch combo 
to fix up lot, a lot of the game. Um, oh, I didn't that, do any patches. Was I supposed to patch it? Oh, my God. I don't. Uh, well, I, I remember there was like a on the loader. It was like, oh, yeah, you can check for patches or something. And it did an automatic one. But I didn't know. I, was I supposed to patch it? This is going to. OK, uh, viewers, I'd like you to like put a pin I, I, in this. I raw dog this game. Oh, my God. OK, we're going to we're going to have you put a pin in this viewers, because this might sh- like explain some of our opinions on the video game a bit better. Okay. Okay. Um. Wow. Holy hell. But yes, shout out to them for that, Uh, because it was for me a significantly better experience for when I played it Um, okay. to hop right into it. Shy has a little mini review, a bit of a novel. Uh, oh, and yeah. <laughs> DK, you are more than welcome to read said. Holy hell. Oh, boy. Okay. That is. Yeah, well, hey, when she said she had 20 pages of notes, she was not mistaken. All right, let's let's go through a couple of the let's, let's go through a couple of paragraphs and then chat about them individually because that might okay. be better than going through the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. So the, so she says, "Fire Warrior is a first person shooter about Kai's the Fire Warrior of Tau Empire who is tasked with saving uh, the Tau Ethereal and getting some real deep shit." Which came out in two thousand and three. For context, uh, that is around Vice City. Enter the Matrix, Medal of Honor, Rising Sun, The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker, and Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. So visually, it looks fairly decent for the time. It is an entirely first-person shooter without any bells and whistles like vehicle sections or anything like that, even though it's ripping off Halo very, very hard with two weapon systems, colored enemies, general feel, etc. Gunplay is weird at least on normal game kicked my ass pretty hard because enemies are bullet sponges and the fact that i turn off auto aim was probably a mistake because accuracy on these guns is shit uh okay. if i could interject for a second i was yes, let's, I, let's stop it there please mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah because like i played the first uh pretty much up until you get back on the tau ship uh, and the Imperials start attacking. I did that without auto aim, and it sucked. Dude, like, I I have never seen a gun that just like it, it's the most uninviting firearm I have fired in a video game. It just ever. like the reticle is not even just a suggestion. It's like a drunken it's a whisper, whisper of a suggestion. Yeah, <laughs> it's a drunken whisper across the hall. Like they just. It mm-hmm. does not matter where you point your gun <laughs> at all. will not hit them. Like, once the enemies turned a little more bullet spongy, I was like, what am I doing wrong? I am I am dying in, like, a fairly normal section of the game looking for a magenta key, of all things. And it's just, oh, my God. Like, and I was like, am I doing, like, am I just this bad at shooting? Like, I know I'm not MLG Pro, and I was like, I'm really excited to see what Bricky says, because, like, I'm not saying you're MLG pro, but you are significantly better at shooters than I am. And I was like, maybe it's just me. Like, I, I got to know, like, what 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 did an actual gamer think? Like, were they missing shots? And yes. yeah, I, 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 I had to turn auto aim on. Once I turned on auto aim, it was like, oh, oh, this is so much better. Yes, the the gun. I mean, it doesn't matter how much of an MLG pro you are if mm, your mm-hmm. gun doesn't listen to you at all. It, mm-hmm. It's straight up, yeah. It's it is very funny because what what Shai mentioned above, where it's like Vice City those days. Uh, this game is really ripping off Halo. It is oh, yeah. one hundred. I mean, I gotta be honest. I don't know what game wasn't back during the Halo CE release. Yeah, uh, I mean, with the, with the success that Halo had as a franchise, like you'd be crazy not to try to rip it off, right? Like Halo CE came out in November fifteenth of of two thousand and one. Right. Mm. And Fire Warrior came out September 2003. And and back then, games were made in like like a, one to two years. Uh, it didn't take long. I mean, imagine. It, I know. Right. Like it, <laughs> some games just did not take very long back in the day. Um, and, and don't get me wrong. There were still a lot of problems, but some things were a lot quicker. So it's very clear. Like, yeah, Fire Warrior obviously takes from Halo a yeah. ton. Um, I will in, agree, though. There's no like vehicle sections or bells and whistles stuff, and I I desperately 
wanted anything to break up the gameplay. Yep. I yep. needed something like that. Uh, and they did, they do throw in a few boss fights, but yeah, they're all couple. very bad. Um, yeah, they're all very bullet spongy. Look at how much damage I do. I hope you strafe around me, right? Yeah, it's very. How did you deal with the Valkyrie in the beginning? Because um, I didn't deal with it very well. So uh, I will be honest with you. I just switched that shit to easy and blew his ass out of the water. Uh, didn't take too much ammo. Didn't take too much strifing. I was like, you know what? Nah, I'm okay with playing on easy. It's fine. And uh, it, it, it goes down relatively quickly. Oh, that is fair. I, I played like Shy did on normal difficulty. And I will admit, uh, um, uh, I was... I, I got my ass kind of handed to me here and there. <laughs> I was I was a little bit like, damn, what the hell, man? Like, when when did I keep dying like this? Yeah, it, I started it, out on normal, and I was like, okay, that was a mistake. And then flopped I, over to easy, because I was like, I got I to gotta finish this damn game. And if I keep on this difficulty, it ain't happening. Also, can we, can we talk about how the Imperial LAS gun has like an M16 carry handle? And it has like an M16 iron. Oh wait, no, it's not the last gun. It's the auto gun. Mm, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's like just an M16. It's pretty funny. Ah, uh, the last gun, the trusty last gun. I think it was the auto gun, but it doesn't matter. Um, to go along and continue with Shy's uh, uh, paragraph. Encounters are fucking annoying sometimes. With game locking you in a room and bum rushing you with enemy waves, and what's really fun mm-hmm. in the end. And what's really fun in the end game, enemies jump scare teleport in and they can shoot as they are appearing. So there are moments where I entered a room and a chaos marine teleported in already shooting and insta murdered me while his model was loaded in. Cool. Cool. Uh, I actually did have a genuine jump scare moment when I played that game. Yeah, I was literally like a, a, a Chaos Marine teleported. And I was like, oh, yeah. I was like, wow, uh, thanks for giving me a good look at your model as it like teleports right in front of my camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, totally random. I love the uh, Imperial like commissars and stuff running at you with a chain sword, just flailing its <laughs> arms everywhere, yep. constantly yep. going. <laughs> just like, here, have one of my grenades. It's so funny. Um, <laughs> totally it, what a commissar would do. Lore interesting. Accurate. Interestingly, a lot of guns are actually very lore accurate. This is probably the closest we came to the OG Bolter, which is supposed to be a gun shaped rocket launcher. Plasmas are also very accurately powerful, dangerous and mm-hmm. prone to overheating. At the same time, Lasgun is just for some reason a Star Wars blaster and Autogun is straight up an M16. For Oh, she beat me to it. <laughs> she did. She it's straight did. up M16 for Call of Duty. This shit is all over the place. I, I agree. Yeah. The Bolter actually is like weirdly accurate. And good. I, I uh, when I first got the bolter, I hadn't turned on auto aim yet, and oh brother, oh, that's that the thing... sent you to the ceiling. Oh yeah, dude, that thing is like you can't hit the broadside of a barn with a baseball with that thing. Like you, uh. <laughs> the bolter needs the auto aim. That shit crazy. I guess uh, I guess more than anything, at least it's lore accurate. It's a towel mm. holding a bolter. Yeah, yeah, they they shouldn't be very accurate with it. I'm surprised his arms stayed on after firing that thing. I actually find it kind of funny, though, because, uh, you know, despite the fact that the weapons are actually rather lore accurate in that way, uh, despite it being like an M16 and stuff, mm-hmm. it's the Tau firearms are like the most inaccurate weapons out of all of them. <laughs> and obviously those would be the most accurate weapons out of all of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cause Tau, Tau firearms are, uh, are notoriously extremely accurate. Mm-hmm. Especially their little, uh, their little experimental rail gun. Yeah. Uh, the, actually the rail gun, did you, okay. When you fired the rail gun, did you like have like an epileptic fit? <laughs> 
because every no, time no, but I, I could fi- totally see how you would. <laughs> every time I fired it, it just like white flashbangs the entire screen. It does flashbang the screen, doesn't it? <laughs> it's really funny. I mean, hey, that thing hits like a truck, though. So you know, it does. If I gotta uh, like you know wear a pair of shades while I use it, so be it. Uh, the plot barely exists, which is fine, but hilariously, it follows the exact same formula as Space Marine 1 and 2 with Xenos versus Imperium, and then it turns out Chaos was behind it all along, and there's a big evil vortex we need to stop. Except this time, the Imperium actually does ally itself with the Xenos for once, which is nice. The setting visually is not super great. This is a corridor shooting at its most basic with the original ass qu- uh, quake grade of architecture and very few spectacle moments. But for 2003, they do their best to showcase the epic scale of battles in 40K. There's a nice little trench warfare moment with Lehman Russes driving over your head, boarding action in space and firefights on the outside of the hull of a massive Imperial ship. I actually will agree that some of the I was kind of shocked at some of the spectacle moments there. I was kind of like, holy, this is like a huge battle. Yeah, uh, like when you first see the vortex too, I was like, "Hey, for two thousand and three, that's pretty good. Like that's that's nice." And like even some of the cinematics, like were they the greatest thing I've ever seen? No, but I was like, ah, different time. You know, you know, you weren't always guaranteed to get a decent looking cinematic back then. So it's like, ah, not bad, not bad. I was a little impressed because that was like one of the reasons. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why Halo was popular, but one of the reasons Halo CE was so beloved is that every single game that ever came out at the time was a corridor shooter. And Halo was like, here's this huge open world area, not like open world, open world, but like, you know, when you land on Halo. Yeah, uh, it, it was crazy. And seeing them, I mean, this was two years later, but seeing them have some of these much more larger spectacles was actually I, I was pretty impressed. I was like, oh, hey, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you want to roll with the uh, vo- uh, the voice acting? <laughs> yeah, voice acting is uh, word bears screaming, blood for the blood god. Uh, the most used enemy war cry is die, idiot. Uh, super, super hot fire shit right there. Really cheesy death screams and hammy performances all around. Uh, but, but, but before you go on about questionable Asian accents, uh, I did my due diligence and checked the actors on IMBD. A lot of them are of Chinese descent since Tao are not literally Japanese that works which is hilarious because in was is it Dawn of War 1 which is in 2004 <laughs> or maybe it's one of the DLCs they have very strong accents as well yep 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 I, you know um, I'm, I'm totally cool with the Tao just being like an amalgamation of all like uh you know Asian cultures Mm-hmm. You know, you could have mm-hmm. like you could have like a Korean accent, a Chinese accent, a Vietnamese, Laotian. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Filipino. Uh, that's like that's a cool concept. But I will, I will admit, when I first heard it, I was like, oh. And then I remembered, oh yeah, this is an older game. It's fine. I'm trying to remember in 2003 how regular was it to get like voice acting in a game like this? Like it's it it was like you could get voice acting, but it's not like you got this. You know, not like the performances you get today, obviously, but it's like I'm trying to remember when voice acting in games became like really, really, really popular and they like could actually do it. You know, well, I mean, before, I mean, Halo CE had plenty of voice acting like, sure. you know, and that was 2001. And yeah. There are plenty of games that in the 90s that came out that had plenty of voice acting as well. I, I, mean, I guess I'm confused by the question. Oh, yeah, I just I. I... Because I remember, like, the first game I remember with, like, solid voice acting was, like, Final Fantasy X. And that was, like, mid-PlayStation <laughs> 2 realm. Not that ha, 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 ha. Exactly! Ha, and I'm just ha, like... Ha, ha, ha. I was like, man, the original one, that, that voice acting left a little to be desired. And I was like, how normal was it? Because I didn't play a lot of shooters. And, like, I didn't play Halo until, like, the, the Master Chief collection came out uh on like steam so i'm not sure like how good of a voice acting performance for like a shooting game in the early 2000s this was i guess uh i mean i think plenty fine there's plenty of them normally happen but yeah no i mean voice acting for a lot of the fps stuff is pretty it was pretty common like there's nothing wrong nothing uncommon about it there i think there was always plenty of that i think maybe maybe you might be like referring to more i don't know advanced 
voice acting, but that kind of came yeah. with with the time, with the upgrades mm-hmm. of you know lots of video games, and then eventually you know like like right now it's like a lot of voice actor unions and stuff like that, you know, and yeah. Oh. Yeah, like I, I wasn't expecting like uh, uh, you know, an award-winning performance or anything. I just, you know, I wasn't sure if this was like good by the standards of the time or like bad by the standards of the time or oh, by the standards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I just, I have nothing to like base it on. Right? Uh, okay, <laughs> like... I'd say this is about normal for the time. I, okay. I, I'd say, I mean, it's, it's, I wouldn't call it good, but we have obviously. The world has changed, so... Oh, yes, yes. In the last 20-some-odd years, <laughs> what we consider good in video games has vastly changed. Uh, continuing with Shy's thing, what I mm. wildly respect about this game is this. Imagine a major Warhammer game where Tower actually acknowledged our protagonists. The main Space Marine enemies are a deep-cut Loyalist Raptors chapter... Word bearers show up for once. Ultramarines have a very small role, and the guard are not Cadians. That would not be allowed today. <laughs> that that's actually pretty true. The guard are yeah. like um, are the guard Valhallen? Do they say what the guard are? I don't. I don't know. I mean, they're not dressed like Cadians, no doubt. Try do you no. know what the guard are in this game? Because they kind of look like scions a bit, but I, I don't think they are. I think they're just well, like uh, oh, that's true. I guess the 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 ones that you encounter after you leave the the initial planet do kind of have a Scion-y vibe to them, don't they? I think I think they look like Valhallans. Though they kind of have like the the drab blue, and they I think they have like great coats, um, but they don't look they don't like scream in like a stereotypical Russian accent or something. So I'm not one hundred percent sure. I I kind of just figured they were just stereotypical guard that weren't necessarily um, one specific regiment. Also, she's got a good point, though. Though it's the goddamn Raptors chapter, the Raptors, yeah, the you, Raptors. Have, have Have you seen what the Raptors look like? Well, mm-hmm. yes, yes, you have. You played the game, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but like they're just like they're spec ops. They they look like your traditional green drab spec ops chapter that that like go really hard into like here's here's a mini that somebody painted like this is probably the most accurate looking raptor it's just very oh. very much classic sci-fi or not sci-fi um like 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 spec ops uh green beret you know old school oh okay yeah 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 um yeah cuz i remember look looking at the logo and i was like what logo is that i was like it kind of looks like a uh they're, they're green and it's kind of a wolf looking thing i was like surely that's not like a salamander because that would be silly why would the ultramarines have a salamander and i think at some point they do specifically say like oh yeah summon the chapter of raptors or something and yeah i was like oh oh that's what they are it's actually it's actually unfortunate because she does that, that's a great point like that would not happen i mean it might happen again today you know for for all my problems i have with rogue trader i i do have to give it a lot of credit that that game basically is just complete nobodies that we've never it's like oh yeah entirely new characters and i Mm -hmm. really like that and i like that you you get rogue trader from a perspective that is not space marine you get it from night and you don't even get it from a guardsman perspective you get it from like the nobility you get it from like the the higher up the haves not instead of the half nots oh, it's actually yeah I, I i have my problems with rogue trader no doubt but it, for, like we'll talk about it one day we'll talk about rogue one trader day. one day yeah one day we'll get there well yeah you know it'll take us about you know uh, an entire calendar year to beat it but one day sure yeah um, quote, I can't speak for how game was perceived by Tau fans in 2003, but I can imagine it must have felt like Space Marine fans feel about Space Marine 2 today, right? A lot of neat Tau vehicle cam- uh, cameos, probably first and last time we actually see aircast Tau in anything but art, the very tall, weird, lanky dudes. That was oh, really okay. cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's cool to have a chance to actually see Tau vehicles, ships, and use Tau guns for once. Imagine these guns, but made by Fat Shark or something. That could be really fun to use. Honestly, like a mm. dark tide, but with a damn railgun would be would be orgasm worthy. That would be so cool. Yeah, seeing the seeing that railgun that you get towards the end of the game, like fully realized in twenty twenty five, would be. I'm I'm here for it. I'm here for it. 
Uh, and hey, while Kais is a silent protagonist and has no real support team, at least he has a Sundare uh, ultramarine boyfriend. So there's that. What are you staring at? Get on with it. We will deal with this Tau race, but not today. I must stop this war so I can concentrate on the greater threat. Overall, I don't think it's worth playing right now other than as a historical oddity and for Tau superfans, but I didn't hate my time with this game. It is what it is for its time. That That's Fair. literally exactly how I feel. I, I did mm -hmm. not hate playing. I'm okay. I did kind of hate playing this game, but I don't think yeah. I hated this game. Yeah, it's I had a rough time with the game because uh like I said earlier, like I I didn't really play these types of games growing up. So I didn't really have the nostalgia goggles to really give it like an objective opinion. Uh so it was just like super dated to me. It just wasn't the type of game I usually play, and it was just it was hard for me to like, you know, just be like, oh yeah, no, no, just it's 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 fine. Like, you know, you're just looking at it from the point of view of a of a nerd in 2025. Like at the time, it was probably fine. You just have, you know, you just have to plow through it and power through it. But there were like cool things. I didn't like completely despise it. Like the gunplay was fine. You know, the every stage essentially being like, hey, collect the key, put down the bomb, beat the commissar stage over uh got a little grading at times but again that was like well that's that's kind of that's kind of what these corridor shooters did at the time right so yeah i think this is it kind of reinforces one of my feelings i had about space marine 2 which was those breakup segments where you do things like drive a scorpion tank or a warthog in halo really do add a lot to the game mm -hmm. uh and and yeah, I'm kind of with Shy on this one. Like, I, I didn't love it at all as a weird historical game from back in the day. It's definitely very dated and everything. And I, I probably wouldn't recommend playing it nowadays. But I can yeah. kind of appreciate it for a lot of that stuff. And you can only you can only do so bad when you're copying Halo. Like, go sure. in, try out a bunch of new weapons, fight in a brand new environment, get to the end, maybe fight a small boss, and then level over. Like, that's a winning formula. Yeah, and and it's strange because every time Fire Warrior had been brought up to me in the past, uh, people made it seem like it was just this irredeemable garbage, just the worst game that has ever been created in the history of gaming. And it's like, you know, like, it's really not. Like, is it the best thing that's ever been made? <laughs> no. Uh, but it's like... It's a serviceable game. Like, you can have a good time with it if, like, you're looking for an old-school corridor shooter. Like, it's fine. Like, there's nothing really that wrong with it, aside from, like, some of the things we've already mentioned. But, like, it's not this just, like, garbage pail of awful that everybody kind of made it out to be. Yeah, I mean, it's it's certainly still not good. No. But uh, I also, I do have to appreciate this. Shy as a meme reel. <laughs> um firstly the imperium loves cheese there's cheese all <laughs> over the table there is so much cheese that's right you go into their little mess hall there's cheese everywhere there's bread everywhere yep yep they, it, they do love their cheese it's so funny because i know exactly what it is they only had like one or two food items that they had to copy paste throughout the game and it's yep. just there's just so much fucking cheese yep. and what what did you think of um the the weird like just stock photo images of like commissars and like there was like a space marine that had his helmet off he was like in all red and he was like holding a skull in his hand or something and i was like are these people i should know or is this just like gw being like here's stock footage put him in a thing up on the imperial ship i'm pretty sure it was just like imperial propaganda okay gotcha. I, I, if, if there was someone specifically it didn't it didn't register to me and i was like damn this art is old but i kind of love that hey john john blanche I, I don't think it was john blanche but john blanche's art is old but he defined Timeless. this he defined this shit yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. dude the the also, how many how many times? Because I, I I gotta be honest, I, even with the update, the amount of times the enemies would randomly scream at the top of their lungs. Well, sorry, they wouldn't scream it; they they'd say it. 
but it would like be five times too loud in the game of them just going, it's quiet. Oh, yep. It yep, happened even... so often. Yep, yep. They're like three rooms away, and it's like, it's quiet. It's quiet. Yeah. Yeah. They The, the voice lines seem like they sometimes ticked at random, like, way too loud. It's just the, the amount of times I heard, it's quiet. And then, like, and then it immediately followed... Yeah, immediately followed directly afterwards by. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> I'm kind of upset the 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 commissars didn't have some kind of crazy voice line when they were just bum rushing you with the chain sword. It's so funny. Well, the crazy voice line. The, see, DK, they did. It was you couldn't hear it over the chain over the chain sword. sword. Right, they were yelling at the top of their lungs, but like the chain sword drowned it out. Fair enough. Also, uh, yeah, the checkpoint system in this game was bad. Oh, my God. They would actually send you back like 10 full minutes. Yeah, they really would. Um, did you have any problem with, um, I guess it was on the Imperium ship, and there's a hallway of turrets with sensors on them. And I know that the room tells you and shows you what their arc was, but oh my god, if you messed that up, I felt like you went back so far, and I was like, ugh. Like, if you died there, it was just, you had to I, go I, back like and, and fight like three space marines, and it's just like, ugh. It, it would, the checkpoint system was a very, very rough. I hated Al it. Also... Speaking of Mary Sue's, uh, Titus ain't got shit on Caius, who is an average fire warrior who is smaller than weaker than a human and yet uses a vehicle rated rail gun as a firearm. 1v1's a Valkyrie, a Chaos Dreadnought several times, kills an entire guard regiment, approximately 10,000 loyal and traitor marines, including Chaos Raptors and Terminators, a Titan, two Demon Princes, and mm -hmm. a Chaos Spawn. Mm hmm. Yeah, he, 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 hey. You know, what a what a guy, what a guy, Caius, what a guy. How did he not get a mini? After all he did, sheesh. He did. He's just a, a damn fire warrior. He's just, <laughs> yeah, he's just a, he's he's, a, you're right. He's just a guy. <laughs> he, he does a lot for just one little dude. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, oh, the Raptors says, are so cool. Like the chaos ones. Oh, chaos raptors are really, really cool. Oh, they were so cool. I think they were raptors anyway, right? Well, raptors are the, are the flying ones with the jetpacks. Yeah. Weren't yeah. the what were they, they were the ones with the claws and uh, fire warrior right that kind of bum yeah, rushing yeah. towards the, the end? Okay, like, cool. Yeah, those are raptors. Okay, cool. Um, I was like, I do have the right raptor, right, right, right. Also, we joked about the ending of Space Ring Two with Luton and how Marnie as Calgar should have jumped in, tore off the head of the Lord of Change, and the game just ended there. Well, here comes Caius, and he fucking kills a Lord of Change <laughs> alone <laughs> by shooting it with guns. Absolutely <laughs> glorious. And the fact that he's now a canon character with his own Black Library book makes it even funnier. This Wait, man is he? Is a canon Smurf Doom Slayer. Wait, Kaya says his own Black Library book? Really? Uh, let me double check. Oh, that's uh, cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a novel called Fire Warrior. That's right. Let's go. I didn't realize that. That dude, that's actually... Man, man, GW, you got to... Okay, they've been doing this a bit more lately. They've started to give us minis about book characters a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, with Gaunt's Ghost, and then we got one for um, uh, Uftak, and then there's mm. a new sister character. Can I Can I have the... Can I... Ha oh, my God. It would go so hard. Just a regular fire warrior, but he's like a little bit of a leader. He's on like a 32 millimeter base, or maybe a 40 for him, and it's actually just a pile of skulls with him crouching over it like the box art. <laughs> That yes. would go so hard. That would go really hard. I'm I'm here for it. Absolutely. Uh, people have <laughs> definitely kitbashed that character a few times. Yeah. But yeah, that's so weird. Like by the end of uh Fire Warrior, I I wasn't like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm killing a Lord of Change with just my little towel rail gun and my plasma uh uh gun. I got I don't know why it just didn't like I don't know. I wasn't like, oh, this is so weird. I shouldn't be able to do this. Um, you get too but used then I to felt bolt weirdly, gun. yeah. But it was weird because I felt that way about the dreadnought, but not the Lord of Change, and I'm not exactly sure why I felt that way. I was like, a dreadnought? Surely not. Lord of Change? Perfectly normal. I I, I don't know. I find it funny regardless because like I I'm just remember. I think it's kind of funny because you look at like bolt gun 
And Bolt Gun is very obviously just Doom, but 40k. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Boomer shooter all the way. But you kill like seven Lords of Change in that game. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're a, what is it? A Stern Guard? So you're a Stern Guard veteran. So which, at least which... there's that. Because they're like the ultramarine. They're like the super ultramarine, right? I mean, yeah, Kinda? but it yeah. doesn't, yeah. it doesn't it's, matter. It... <laughs> well, at least, at least I could see that dude doing it. It's like, it's to like, like, hello, I'm Joe Schmo Tao. Yeah, it, it's like saying, like, oh yeah, this a sergeant in the <laughs> army is uh, going to get totally one up by a Navy SEAL, but it doesn't really matter when they're fist fighting like a nuclear submarine. That's you know, true. <laughs> that's <laughs> true. You, that's like, <laughs> he, hey, he's going to do better though. But it's like, yeah, that's you're mm, okay. You're right. It, it is a little silly. Granted, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, hell, we had a Laura change at the end of Space Marine too, and at least, well. The the final boss fight is a little not right, but like at least when the, when we were rolling up that like big contingent of like tanks and Marnius and stuff to go up like the hill, that was a bit more what I'd expect against the Lord of Change. That yeah. was like a real force. Also, I, I I guess Lord of Change is a real popular uh, demon because that shows up in a lot of games. Well. I- so there's four uh, greater demons, right? Mm-hmm. You've got the Lord of Change, the mm-hmm. great unclean one, mm-hmm. which is like pretty good. Then you've got the Bloodthirster, Bloodthirster. which is just a big Satan. <laughs> and then you have the Keeper of Secrets, which you cannot put in your video game because oh, yeah. them, them <laughs> titties are out. <laughs> yes. I was like, why can't you put? Oh, Slanesh. Yeah, no, nope, you're right. Yep. Fair yep. enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. And then you can't really put like an undivided one because then it's like Bellacore and that's like a major character. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I guess that's true. When you're doing a video game, it's like, well, you've got Satan, completely not safe for work, uh, really gross, hard to uh, render out, uh, blobby, decaying, pus filled uh, Nurgle thing. And uh, Big Bird, dude. I guess we'll go with Big Bird, dude. Saber. Put Saber. That- Put Vashtor in your game in Space Marine 3 and my life is yours. <laughs> yes! Swellacor, give me Swellacor or give me death. You mean Swolacor? Swolacor. Well, Swellacor sounds better because you got the swell. Oh, no, it would be Swole. You're right. Never mind. Yeah, but I know mean, Swell, Bell. I, I get it. He's so swell. I, I would love like Vashtor as like the main villain. Just him, like, got some weird machinations he's got going on. He speaks so creepily, and you could really animate that well. Good stuff. Yeah. Yep. But um, that, that's true. They do have bloodthirsters in the in the Chaos Gate game. But yeah, f- four Grey Knights kill Mortarian while in the Garden of Nurgle. So that's a little bit shenanigans too. Yeah, that is. That's a little. Um, I I, mean, I hey, do my Grey Knights. I do my best to to not like care too much about power scaling. It's fun to like poke at it. And be like, oh, yeah. ha, that's funny. Uh, yeah. But then, you know, and sometimes they do jump the shark, like with the whole uh, Lord of Change and stuff at the end of yeah. Space Marine 2. But um, but it's a video game, and it's like, you kind of got to put the iconic stuff in there. So, like, a little unbalanced power scaling is to be expected. A, a little bit. It is, yeah, and you want to have some cool stuff, and you want lots of mm-hmm. really interesting enemies, so it's mostly okay. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, it's a video game. It's yeah, you a game. Like, you accept it. You accept it because you have to. Yeah, um, yeah. But, on a, I mean, especially in this one, because a fire warrior should not be doing what he's doing. <laughs> no, one little Tau fire warrior probably should not be overthrowing chaos. But yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just a contrarian asshole, but... I didn't like hate it. I, th- I think maybe because I expected I would, I would hate it. I thought yeah, I would you know, go I in think... and like despise it. And I and it's it's Halo and Halo's fun. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was. It's not my favorite game, but it like I said before, it wasn't like the most irredeemable thing ever. I had a hard time with it because like my own personal gaming preferences and not really having. Um, grown up with that style or being much of a corridor shooter but like a game as a whole it's fine like if you're in 2024 2025 good lord probably don't play it like you're not gonna enjoy it probably but like eh, it's fine it's a little piece of history 
Yeah, gaming history. If you want to see what games were like in 2003, sure, give it a couple hours, but yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, how long did it take you to beat, like, five hours, give or take? Uh, I want to say, I don't know, I feel like it took me, like, anywhere, like, six, seven-ish. Huh. I guess Shy makes but a that might point. just because I'm slow at it, and, you know, whatever. Uh, Shy said it took her eight hours on medium with no auto-aim. The no auto-aim definitely would be a part of it. That is impressive that you played through that whole game without auto-aim, dude. That That's is wildly rough. impressive. Like, that might, like, you need an Xbox achievement for that, dude. Uh, I, I will say, yeah, I do kind of see it the same way, which is like, it's just kind of like a historical exhibit, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, mm-hmm. hey, you know, this is like a cool piece of Warhammer history from back in the day. Sure. Um, you know, Dawn, Dawn of War crazily holds up still, but that's because it's an RTS, and RTSs tend to be kind of timeless. Yeah, um, definitely. I mean, not timeless, but like, you know, people still play StarCraft, Bro- like Brood War. Oh. Probably because StarCraft Brood War is goaded with the sauce. There's still a huge tournament scene for that, scene for that game, isn't there? Like, massive, right? Like I don't know if Korea? I go as far as to say massive, but like like StarCraft Two still has plenty of like professional things, you know. Mm-hmm. Which is wild that it's still going like at a decent capacity. Oh man, I'm about to I'm about to crumble into dust. StarCraft Two Wings of Liberty release date, because I remember the trailer for it where it's like hell, it's about 2010. Kill me. 2010 put, put a put a put a a bolter to my temple i mean 2010 uh, that's like look that was that a long time ago sure man i remember literally playing games on my sega genesis all right like, yeah yeah i know but like right, star like you- starcraft 2 it also still looks really good yeah starcraft's like visuals always held up yeah they they, they well the brood war is still a bit old but um for the most part it's just, it just has like a visual that's like yeah. just like ah that's nice you know i don't know that was, that was one thing i really liked about uh fire warrior was like the like even though the rest of the game wasn't like the most visually amazing the guns shockingly held up and there were a lot of them there were a lot of guns a lot of variety of guns this was pretty i love seeing all the tau guns that, um, it was cool. I it, it's cool to actually like. I I get why people kind of like the whole. Oh, it's that thing that I like in in rendered in a video game, even though it doesn't do much for me. Uh, but some of them were kind of neat, even though I was getting like flash banged by the yeah. railgun all the time. It looked cool though. I remember when they first gave me the Tau carbine. I was like Tau carbine, my beloved. <laughs> I love you. The uh, what surprised me is that the ending planet bombardment footage, like one of the most used images for Exterminatus. Yeah, it's like the common. Well, that one in um, Dawn of War two, I think, are the two big ones, right? Wow, really? That well, I guess yeah. It, it was very, it was very a nice cinematic. Um, a part of me while they were like flying up as they were like bombarding the planet, I was like, I bet the Ultramarines like you know, if we hit that Tau ship on <clears throat> accident. It would not be the end of the world. <laughs> like, oh no, we accidentally hit the Xenos that helped us. Shoot. Oh, damn, you're not you're not wrong, Shy. That is the Exterminatus like image. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're not wrong. I I, I didn't even real I didn't they really think about that. Also, yeah, I do I, mean, lo- I love how almost every game back in the day always ended with Exterminatus. I mean, when you think of Warhammer 40k, one of the first things most people think about is, oh, is that the one where they exterminate stuff? And it's like, yes, yes, that is the franchise. Yep. Mm -hmm. I feel kind of silly, though, because I I almost feel like uh, blowing up a planet is just like a sci-fi trope, you know? I guess that's true. I mean, Star Wars does it, too, don't they? Star Star Wars was the OG who did it. Yeah. Yeah. The Death Star. Mm hmm. I mean, and and, and 40k didn't steal anything from Star Wars. No, what 40k is all completely original. They would never take anything from Star Wars, Dune. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Dune yeah. probably also had planet killers that they gave to Star Wars too. Oh sure, oh sure. Like Dune was like the father of sci-fi, right? Like every sci-fi took a little something from Dune. I still haven't seen Dune. Uh, Dune Part two. two yet? Yeah. Big same. Big same. I should I like. I really like Dune Part One. I did too. I, I I've been told Dune Part Two is like better, and it's fantastic. Yeah. 
Shy says, I read the book in all caps. I <laughs> She's is a that, hipster. Shy, I'm sure like Paul Atreides is a, is a totally nice guy the whole way through, right? And he has a mm. noble upbringing and that truly allows him to help the galaxy for the better. Oh, sure. As the as those of noble birth always end up being like, right? Yeah. Perfect. I'm glad to know that that's the case. No corruption to be seen. No. But yeah, Tau Fire Warrior. Uh, it's on GOG. It's cheap. I would very much recommend uh, installing the Mandalore Gaming patch that is located on the... Oh, Shai, I think you... Do, you... do you mind putting that link in the description of this video? Because that might Can help you... people out. Can you tell me what the patch does? Because, I, like I said, I raw-dogged it. Like, what, what does the patch do that makes it so much better? Graphical fixes, a lot of audio fixes is the big one. Um, ah. There's some dialogue that gets adjusted, a couple gameplay things. I think some of the HUD. PC Gaming Wiki, that's where it is. Okay. Okay. I guess the game also had, like, no soundtrack, did it? No, it really didn't, actually, come to think of it. The game yeah, because well, once like, you said like audio fixes, I was like, I don't think this game had any music, did it? Yeah, it, it, if it did, it, if it did, it wasn't in the game, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the new one, if, if back in the, you know, back in the beginning or whatever. Yeah, I couldn't remember if that was just me or if I was just like, oh, I was just firing my gun so often. I just don't remember the OST. And I was like, I, actually, I don't think one existed. I don't know. That is a tough one. I'm not 100% yeah. sure. I remember what the gun sounded like. I remember the uh, of enemies dying. I don't remember if there was any music. Don't forget the vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> yeah. And the pelvic ramp. Sh the pelvic. Extend the pelvic ramp, Tao. <laughs> pelvic ramp engaged. <laughs> the pelvic <laughs> ramp. I forgot about the pelvic <laughs> ramp. How else are you going to put the bomb charge on the pelvis? <laughs> the pelvic the ramp. The pelvic ramp. <laughs> so our our thoughts on Fire Warrior. There you go, right? It, it's <laughs> it is a it is a cute uh capsule of a different age and it is and it is not the worst way you could spend the when next time you're logging into ranked League of Legends think to yourself, <laughs> could I be spending this better? Is Fire Warrior a ton better? No, but it is better. Detox better your, now. Yeah, it's better for your mental health. Detox yeah. immediately. It is too late, Trooper. My body and spirit are broken. Go! Govash needs you. They have just taken him to the Neuro Chamber. It lies beyond the great doors at the end of the corridor. Go now!